leaders of the German government, leaders and members of the Jewish community, and all those involved in organizing today's event, thank you for joining us today. I am honored to be here to commemorate the 74th anniversary of Flossenburg's liberation and the launch of the Bonhoeffer Initiative. As chairman of the United States Commission for the Preservation of Americans' Heritage Abroad, I have been tasked by the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, with protecting, preserving historic sites of heritage and significance to Americans and their ancestors. Our efforts here in Flossenburg exemplify that mission. This concentration camp saw 100,000 prisoners pass through its gates of hell, 30,000 destined to their death. One thing I have learned from my work for the Commission is that even in the depths of darkness, we can find light. Even in a place that represents pure evil, we can discover virtue. And today we do that by paying tribute to Pastor Diedrich Bonhoeffer. When the Nazi Party came to power in 1933, Bonhoeffer was only 26 years old, with just a year of priesthood under his belt. But his conviction was as strong as if he had been developed over a lifetime. Two days after Hitler became chancellor, Bonhoeffer delivered a radio address warning Germany against falling for the cult of the Fuhrer. Mid-sentence, mid he was cut off. But that did not quiet the pastor for long. Just three months later, in a seminal lecture, Bonhoeffer called for church resistance to Hitler's persecution of the Jews. In a quote inspired by Gandhi, from which Martin Luther King Jr. later drew inspiration, the young Bonhoeffer demanded that the church not only bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice, but to jam a spoke into the wheel itself. Even bolder than Bonhoeffer's words were his actions. Though he succeeded in escaping to London, Bonhoeffer returned to Nazi Germany to build a network of churches in opposition to the official state church. And when the government banned his seminary, Bonhoeffer took his movement on the ground. He later joined the political resistance, and as an employee for Germany's military intelligence office, he used trips abroad to filter information to his foreign government contacts. Only by remembering Pastor Bonhoeffer and the thousands of others who sacrificed and suffered for the freedoms we have today can we rightly commemorate Flossenburg's liberation. Today we happen to be blessed with the presence of one of those thousands who suffered here, Jack Perry. The youngest survivor of Flossenburg, a prolific author and speaker, and just a wonderful human being. But as he can attest, as the years go by, we lose more survivors and risk losing the sight of the past. For this reason, the Bonhoeffer Initiative is implementing an exchange program to teach students, young students, about what happened here in Flossenburg. And the United States Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad has worked with the initiative to build a website and an app which is being launched here today, dedicated to honoring the pastor's memory and making sure the whole world will know what happened here in Flossenburg. Bonhoeffer said, the test of morality of a society is what is done for its children. By teaching our children about the darkness of Flossenburg and the atrocities of Nazi Germany, the light that Pastor Bonhoeffer brought, we hope will ensure the promise of never again for future generations. And we will inch closer to the moral society that Bonhoeffer envisioned. God bless you. God bless the souls of those who perished and were murdered in Flossenburg. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.